Friends, every car comes with a mileage rating. In the case of this Kia that I'm driving today, it's 20 in the city, 26 on the highway for a combined average of 23 miles per gallon, which is pitiful if something like this is your daily driver. That really adds up. But look what I'm getting. How can that be? Well, today I'm going to edify you about a secret device people have been installing on all sorts of makes and models of cars to increase performance, reduce maintenance costs, and give you better gas mileage as well. The mill's behind the camera. Let's get started. All right, now this is an in-depth video and you really should watch it all, but we've put chapter markers in the description down below because I recently discovered we got a lot of toilet watchers in the audience and I don't want your legs falling asleep or nothing. So here's how it's divvied up. Basic concepts simplified of why the device works on just about any make and model of car. Data I've gathered as proof the device increases your gas mileage. A cross-section of the device and how it works demonstrated by the developer himself, as well as a complete installation by the developer with all the nuances a person would need to understand what's going on, even if you don't have the exact same car he's working on. This one's a Kia Telluride. And then, my final calculations, which you might just be surprised by. Basic Concepts so, like Margie, everybody enjoys pampering their car, but you should take a look under the hood once in a while, because that's where the secrets lie. I'm driving down the road, because controlled explosions are happening inside a box called a combustion chamber. But if the box was tightly sealed, internal explosions would burst it into a thousand pieces. Kind of like a firecracker, right? And that would be bad. But if the explosions take place with a way for the pressure to escape, like this explosion inside an open bottle, well, the bottle don't get destroyed, but it sure does move, don't it? Yeah, well, explosions inside your car's engine make the parts of your car move. And a proper system of ventilation allows them to do that without destroying the crankcase. Thus, an important concept. Positive Crankcase Ventilation, or PCV, which is where this special device comes into play by cleaning up the dirty mess pooped out through the PCV valve. Yeah, your engine is also like a fireplace. Smoky air gets released through your exhaust, of course, just like a chimney. But with a car, some of that dirty air gets recycled back through your engine through a hose that comes from the PCV valve. So just imagine if that chimney was a big pipe that connected right back down to your front door. Your house would be covered in soot, wouldn't it? And that, friends, is what the modern PCV system does to your car's engine. So by installing this device I'm about to unveil, your engine can be kept cleaner and run more efficiently, providing you with a variety of benefits. It's slightly oversimplified, but let's face it, we ain't got all day. Is so the device I'm about to show you will work on just about any gas-powered vehicle. Some people will try to call it an oil catch can, but you'll see in a minute. What I'm talking about is a whole lot more than that. My case study was this Kia Telluride I've been driving to gather my data, nearly identical to my Tellumerv, but my friend installed the special device. So here's a spreadsheet my friend started, and then I added about 10 of my own entries to it while I was driving this thing around over a period of days. And the outside temperature was recorded, you see, the average speed of each trip, uh, that's the miles driven divided by the time it took, and then the miles per gallon achieved for each trip. Now keep in mind, uh, this vehicle is rated for up to 20 city, 26 highway, up to that's a combined average of up to 23 miles per gallon. And look at what was achieved here. Uh, combined average uh, MPGs of uh, 28, 29, 30. Look, we got 30 on five different occasions here. You see? And, and it's interesting because if you look at the average speed of those trips, they're right around 40 miles per hour. 
the Telluride apparently enjoys going 40 miles an hour. And on the lower end, you'll see only 20 miles per gallon. But we're talking about an average speed there at 19 miles per hour, pretty much stuck in traffic. I mean, if I was going any slower, I'd be going backwards. So, yeah, I mean, the device is making a difference. And uh, there's people out there insist on calling this thing a catch can. And that's a catchy marketing term. But technically, this device is an air oil separating crankcase evacuation system. A-O-S-C-E-S. I just made up an acronym. AOSCUS. Let's just call it a catch can, all right? Gee. But if you are shopping around for a catch can, do some research and look into this because uh, it was invented way down there in the free state of Florida by an automotive engineer and developer by the name of Tracy Lewis of RX Performance. And uh, I'll put a link in the description below. So here's the footage my producer friend obtained of Tracy Lewis himself showing you exactly how it works. So this is an illustration of our patented main separator. Your contaminant-laden vapors from the crankcase are entering through B, the center. As you can see, it's still a closed tube. And we get into the primary coalescing chamber. Then this tube is perforated all over to disperse these oil-laden vapors through these stainless steel coalescing media. Uh, this separates most of the oil out of the vapors. Uh, the oil vapors are coming out the bottom and doing a U-turn up this way. This is where more condensing takes place as we're cooling. Any residual liquids that are still suspended are going to separate and as the vapors get into the secondary condensing chamber they slow again. They're going pretty fast here. Slow again and then they have to pass the upper disc baffle. By this time we've separated out 90 to 95 percent. Vapors, scrub vapors go into a common outlet chamber and nowhere in this entire seven and a half inches of travel do the incoming contaminant laden vapors mix with the outgoing scrubbed vapors. Every other catch can, they all go in and commingle in a common chamber like this. And it's impossible to get more than roughly 20% efficiency in separating uh, the suspended substances you don't want. Uh, anything that is dripping out of here while you're running and you have that flow going through, that rapid flow, is just pulled into the other side and eventually pulled out like you put a washcloth and got it wet and put it to your mouth and sucked on it you'd suck water through. Well, this suction is many times stronger than your uh, mouth is going to be able to produce. This sucks the oil out to still be ingested. Every different design you could imagine, we buy them all, we test them, we examine them. This one has no filtration coalescing anything. You just have vapors coming in and they do a U-turn and go out. So a little bit of condensing is how you'll get oil, but this will trap less than 15% on average. Well, Mayor DeMille, hold on, pause that. Yeah. Now, to me, what this feller's saying makes a lot of sense. Them other cans is nothing. You might as well hook up a mayonnaise jar with a couple of hoses. It'll do the same thing. Yeah, he, it's just my opinion, but his design to me is thoughtful and it is scientific. Well, that matters. All right, let's watch this install. So the first thing we're going to do here is mount this right up in here. That's going to allow plenty of room, make it pretty easy to drain, and uh, looks like it was made for it. This is a 14 millimeter. It's a flange head nut and it's a lock nut, so it's pretty handy here. 
distance bracket is for the Kia specifically. And we're going to snug that back up. Take our billet clamp here. And we're going to take these two quarter 20 bolts out. And we're going to put it toward the bottom of the adjustable slots. Tighten those up. Take a flat blade screwdriver, slip it in the slot and turn it. Expand it so we don't scuff up the surface. We're going to tighten the clamp up. That's going to secure it and you can get at the drain easy enough, and that part is done. So now we have uh, the PCV hose connection, which is right behind the throttle body toward the firewall. We've taken that uh, line loose, which is the direct path from the valve cover with all the crankcase vapors to the intake manifold. We don't want that oil ingested. So now we're going to route it by extending the lines over to the can itself. We have put a barb in on the PCV hose itself. So we're just going to get this slid on here. A little lubrication. And now this is a little awkward, so I'm going to try to hold this end with the channel locks. Push it on fully onto the barb. No need for an additional clamp. And now that'll be back here, hit away. And we're going to measure so that it is just the length we need. Cut a little long. Plenty of hose comes in your kit, and the one from the valve cover doesn't get any check valves. Hook it to the center, which is the inlet on our design. And make sure that hose is not hanging down onto the exhaust, and it's not. It's up out of the way, and that looks great. Next, we're going to push on to the intake manifold vacuum barb. Now since it's pointing towards the driver's side, we're going to have to be a little bit more creative with the routing. So we do not want it kinked. So what we're going to do is loop it around the sound muffler we're going to make sure we've got enough length and route it in nice and neat. And this will be our main evacuation source, the intake manifold itself. We're going to make sure that it's up in here supported. I'm going to cut a little off. Check valve has a arrow on it for flow. You're going to blow through it just to make sure it only flows one way and that needs to be away from the can. And it doesn't matter which outer one you use, they both come from a common outlet chamber. Just fully get the hose on, no need for any clamps again. And that part is complete. So what we're going to do now is install the Venturi vacuum generating valve. Now what this does, once it's mounted, the incoming airflow going past the 45 opening creates a low pressure area inside the tube generating at just 4,000 rpm up to 14 inches of vacuum and this is our secondary vacuum source 
So you can remove your intake air bridge if you'd like to do this or you can put a little wheel bearing grease on and that catches the debris. Pick the center of a flat spot which that one probably isn't big enough. Let's go right here. That should be enough room. So take the center of it. You're going to first drill straight down. And then you're going to ream it at a 45 or a little more. And we're going to wipe this because we have to put a uh, either RTV, I prefer Permatex right stuff, but uh, any good fast setting sealant will work. Test fit first. So it's going to go down in and then we're going to put a pretty thick bead on and then have some masking tape or zip ties because it takes up to 24 hours to cure completely. So when it's set, it's going to be at about that angle. All right, let me grab some zip ties. And we're going to thread that through. Bring it up. There. And make sure there's enough to seal it good. Okay. And we have our Venturi in place. We're now going to run the last of the foul and dirty sideline. It's going to go on to there. Make sure it's long enough. And it can hide under the engine cover itself. All right. Again, we need this flowing away from the cam toward the vacuum source. All right. Verify the arrow in the flow. Slid on nicely. And this section is finished. Primary vacuum is coming from the intake manifold barb. Check valve flowing away from the can to one of the outers. Can be either outer they uh, both come from the same outlet chamber inside here and the second vacuum source is the venturi valve which we've got zip tied up here check valve flowing away from the can toward the venturi how this is going to work is while intake manifold vacuum is present basically idle deceleration and light cruise it's going to provide enough vacuum to be the primary evacuation suction source we're pulling the vapors out of the crankcase and providing constant suction on the crankcase the center is going to be the inlet that's bringing in the contaminant laden vapors and this goes to the hose that's connected to the PCV valve on the rear of the backmost valve cover. No check valves in it because we're bringing those vapors straight in. So before we move on to the clean side, we're going to just do a little test here and start this up and verify there's no leaks, uh, no check engine lights. And then we're going to move on to the fresh or the clean side. Okay, now the clean side of a PCV system is where the filtered fresh mass airflow metered air, if so equipped, this one is, is drawn from the main air intake through this larger tube 
into this valve cover. That air is going to travel around the camshafts, down the oil return galleys, and it's going to flush and make up for the contaminant-laden vapors we're evacuating or sucking out from the rear bank valve cover. So next thing we're going to do is remove the stock oil fill cap. This install, this is the only stock part we actually remove, is the stock oil fill cap. Our clean side separator addresses the ingestion from the clean side, which is this larger tube where your air flows in. Since we have corrected the system to provide full time evacuation suction, once the base is on, if you want to add oil, you just wiggle this as you pull it up. And we're going to remove this portion of the hose. All of these barbs are going to be plastic, so you have to be very careful that you first wiggle the hose so it is not stuck. We're going to add our half-inch barb with the larger diameter. We're going to put half the barb in. We're going to take our pliers and the snap clamp. It's going to secure that. We're going to put the half inch vacuum cap on this barb so it's not left open. We need to cap and plug the original pathway for the filtered fresh air to come in. And we're now routing it through this portion. So we're adding a good three inches of vertical height. So gravity is going to keep oil from coming back and uh, it also has a filtration chamber separation chamber with coalescing media in it so we are making our hose little on the long side we're going to hook this up here there are only a couple spots we're going to be able to go out underneath the cover we're going to thread this under here under this wire harness make sure nothing is kinked and then this will go on to here and this is going to take care of the clean side if you need to add oil you simply wiggle and pull up there are two o-rings to seal it and that's how you will add oil from now on and then from here we're going to install the engine cover itself so that's the installation. The RX, Tracy Lewis Performance, patented air oil separating crankcase evacuation system. Well, there you go. I told you it was more than just a catch can. Now, I want to show you one last thing on this spreadsheet. You got uh, 27 entries here, and uh, I'll add them up. That's, uh, that's 740. And then we're going to divide that by 27 entries to get an average. And you know, so you got 740 uh, divided by uh, 27 comes to 27 mpg. These are rounded off, by the way. It's 27.4. But think about it. An average of 27.4 compared to the promised average of 23 is a big difference. And it's like a... This is a 17% increase. But remember, it's not just totally about gas mileage. That's just the icing on the cake. Devices like this, and I really was impressed by it, and no, I ain't being greased to say this, but devices like this improve overall engine efficiency, and they do give you better gas mileage, but they also prevent nasty buildup on your valves and general gunk collected inside your air intake manifold, which if you want to see a perfect example, watch the air intake manifold cleaning video I done on the Prius. We'll link to that below as well. There's lots of residue caused by vaporized oil being pumped back through your air intake, courtesy of Dirty Donna, otherwise known as the PCV valve friend. So I hope this helps you and gives you some hope for a more affordable commute.
and a healthier engine. As always, leave your comments in the section below or hit me up on social. I'd love to hear what your research tells you, even if you disagree with me. This is Merv himself. I'll see you next time. <laughs>